Thank you all for recognizing the importance of this event and for being here. You know, tonight, the Asian American Business Development Center is honoring a group of distinguished, unique individuals who have in common a work ethic, a determined spirit that has enabled them to not only thrive, but to prevail and persevere in spite of adversity that often gets in the way. This, my friends, is the Asian American success story. Now, I also wanted to mention, being a, a journalist, it's very important to have social media as part of any event, so do please tag Outstanding50, hashtag AABDC, or Recognizing Asian Americans Throughout the Night. Now, many of our honorees came to the U.S. on hopes and dreams of getting a better education, buying a home, getting a good job, and owning their own business. Even some are second and third generation, and some came within the last few years. You can read about their achievements in your dinner program, and please do so. There are some really talented individuals who are here tonight. And I don't need to tell you that the hardworking Asian Americans are an important contributor to the U.S. economy. And in this increasingly interconnected global marketplace, Asian Americans can easily cross language and cultural borders to develop and grow business and contribute to what makes the U.S. a great, diverse country. That's why having tonight's awards gala takes on such special significance. It's now my honor to introduce you to the person who made this evening possible, John Wang. As many of you know, John established the Asian American Business Development Center in 1994, which means this year we celebrate 25 years. And back in 1994, his main focus was to help Asian American business enter, businesses enter and compete in the mainstream marketplace. On a day-to-day -day basis, he came into contact with people like you who worked hard, achieved a lot, but weren't being recognized at high-profile events or in the community. So in 2001, he established the first Outstanding 50 Asian Americans in Business Awards Gala. And tonight, we have this 18th anniversary event. The AABDC will have honored now over 850 outstanding individuals, including all of your honorees here tonight. Over the past 25 years, AABDC has gained recognition as one of the most influential and respected organizations in the American, Asian American business community. Good evening. Welcome everyone to the 18th Annual Outstanding 50 Asian Americans in Business Award and the 25th anniversary of the Asian American Development Center. Tonight, we pay tribute uh, to that recipient of the Outstanding 50 Asian American in Business, who will join over 800 alumni uh, of the award. And I also want to extend a warm welcome and congratulations uh, to Laxman Narasimhan, who is the 2019 recipient of the Pinnacle Award. And my name is John Wong, and some of you have heard, and uh, AABDC, and we had funded in, 20, uh, in 1994, and was to promote, develop, and advocate for Asian Americans in the workplace, whether at the large corporation or as a small business owners. The Outstanding 50 and Pinnacle Awards, our signature event. Tonight, our 2019 honorees join over 800 accomplished business professionals whom we regard as our, our primary constituents. For many of you, this is your first encounter with our organization. So please, uh, let me give you a short introduction of what we do, what we stand for, and why we do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Asian Americans are often regarded as the model minority. We have a reputation for being hardworking, well-educated, and ambitious. But many of us, especially uh, from the generation I come from, are also regarded as being silent minority. We don't speak up for our rights, we don't join social causes, and we are afraid to be seen as complainers. This needs to change. The world is getting more global, more complex, and more competitive. I know firsthand 
how many talented Asian Americans there are in business, because we have honored hundreds of you. So it's time to share the secret. I want you to know that once you have been named as an Outstanding 50 or Pinnacle Award winner, you are a member of a special community. You will be invited to our annual exclusive Asian American Business Roundtable, which we launched in 2016, to work with your peers to find solutions that promote better diversity and inclusion, and to broaden economic opportunities for all. This roundtable provides a unique networking opportunity to meet other successful Asian Americans as well as non-Asians across various industries. You might even be one of our speakers. You see, we don't regard tonight as a one-time event. We see it as a way to enlist the talented Asian American professional into the broader community, objective of being more visible, not just on individual roles, but in the boardroom and the C-suite of America corporate community. So here's a quiz. Name an Asian American who is the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. And no using Google uh, to cheat, okay? <laughs> so I'm okay, I'm sure some of you came up with Microsoft, Yahoo, or Google. What if I ask you to name an Asian American woman CEO of a Fortune 500 company? So are you stumped? Well, I can tell you that three years ago, we honor one of the very rare Asian American women CEO, Lisa Su of AMD, who is a Pinnacle Award. You get my point. While many Asian Americans have attained excellent academic uh, credential and enjoy a career achievement, and even make, even make up large proportion of industry like, a high, like a high tech and finance, very few make it to the top rounds. I mention Asian American women because this is a topic that AABDC is committing resources, focus, and time to this year. In May, thanks to the generosity of Nelson, we con conducted our first survey of successful Asian American women business leaders. We tap our own database of outstanding 50 winners. In other words, people just like you in this room, for a qualitative survey. This study in turn helped us to design a one-day conference hosted by Bank America that explored the issues of why Asian American women in particular are missing from corporate leadership. I can see in this room, there are many outstanding 50 women winners tonight. Why don't you raise your hand and wave at me so we can all see how many women uh, on the read that are here this evening. Well, stay tuned, because we plan to make Asian American women leadership an ongoing theme for this year and beyond, with more programs that we will base on feedback from the Outstanding 50 winners. And for the Outstanding 50 men, we haven't left you, uh, left you out. What we found from the survey I mentioned is that suggestions that corporate employee resource group take a more active role in career development of their members. Men and women, I'm sure many of you know of or belong to your company's ERGs. Some of your diversity and inclusion champion may even be your guest tonight here. We want to work with ERGs to create programs that are relevant to their Asian American members with the support of their companies. Mentorship and sponsorship were mentioned as a key factor for success in the survey Nelson conducted. We are planning a meeting of about 30 corporate ERGs to start a dialogue in July on how best to equip ERG to offer more professional services to their members. The result of the meeting will be the topic of the Asian American Business Roundtable Summit uh, in 2020. And we are thinking about how to bring this idea nationwide we have been speaking with a large corporate advisory uh, organization about creating an Asian American Executive Council, which will focus on developing the skills and ability needed to be leader in enterprises. I hope to have more to share on this program uh, in the coming months. 
The Outstanding 50 and the Pinnacle Award Dinner is the most expensive program that we run each year. We could not do it without the generous and the loyal support of individuals, companies, and friends of AABDC. This year, our sponsors include Diageo, PepsiCo, Colgate Palmolive, Kong Edison, J.P. Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley, and Pfizer. CEO, please join me in a round of applause for our sponsors. So thank you, sponsor, from the bottom of my heart. Tonight is also the result of a five months of work by the AABDC team and the dinner committee. I want to name our dinner committee member, Joyce Chan of J.P. Morgan Chase, Mamu Khan, formerly of PepsiCo and now of Live Bioscience. Bob Miglani, best-selling author, Kamesh Nagarajan of Morgan Stanley, Bala Santayana Rayan, Rayanan, Xerox, Lisa Su, AMD, Ning Yuan, China Construction, Angela Chow, Foremost Group, Jody Chopra, Pearson, Susan Huang, Morgan Stanley, Michael Ku, Pfizer, I'm proud to say that all of them are four more Outstanding 50 Award honorees. I also want to mention the outstanding work of the AABDC team. Jing Li, Ska Wang, and Si Yu Yao. I appreciate the work and love they put into the making this special event for all of you this evening. And big thank you also to our volunteers and contributors to help in making this evening possible. So please enjoy your dinner, and congratulations to the 18th class of the Outstanding 50 winners. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Sima, for that introduction. I am honored to be able to be here this evening to address this important celebration. And again, uh, if you look in your program and you see Kathy Hochul, I apologize that she is not here this evening, but I am really thrilled to be able to be here on her behalf. I, I thank you for the invitation and extend the regrets of the Lieutenant Governor uh, who was unable to join you this evening. I hope I'm able to uh, perform as an acceptable proxy for you. I congratulate you on a successful 18th year of this event as you also celebrate the 25th anniversary of Asian American Business Development Center. I extend my congratulations to the outstanding 50 Asian American businesses that you are all honoring this evening and a special congratulations to the 2019 Pinnacle Award recipient, Laxman Nahari. Nahas, gosh, I practiced it. I practiced, I promise. On the way here, I was practicing how to say this. Nara Simnan. Did I get it right? Thank you. Have mercy on me. I tried. Global Chief Commercial Officer of PepsiCo. I was so proud of myself, I stumbled. So my apologies. I hope I did somewhat justice to your name. The Asian American Business Development Center plays an important role in the support of minority-owned businesses in New York State and is a real partner in our progress. But networking and mentorship is also critically important. Especially, it's especially exciting to see the many Asian communities that are represented here tonight. As someone who works on behalf of the governor every day to support entrepreneurs and help businesses succeed in New York, I thank you for being a, valu a valuable ally in our efforts. To those that are being honored tonight, your success has helped to move our state and national economy forward. I often speak about how government has the power to improve people's lives, investing in affordable housing, combating the opioid epidemic, and ensuring access to health care. But at the same time, we recognize the importance of partnering with the business community. We rely on you, the innovators, the great thinkers, to create jobs and bring new ideas to the marketplace. We cannot do it alone. As our economy is transforming, we rely on groups like the Asian American Business Development Center to stay one step ahead, ensuring we're meeting the workforce needs of the future. So if you are Asian or African American or Latino or a woman, climbing the ladder in corporate America can be especially challenging. But events like this are the one reason why corporate America has progressed in the last 18 years. There's a better recognition of the importance of diversity at the highest levels. 
More ethnic diversity in corporate boardrooms and C-suites is good for New York, and it's good for America. Here in New York, we celebrate our diversity. It is our strength. As we see tonight, our country is stronger with more diverse representation in the business community. We know this here in New York. That is why we have worked so hard to create a robust program to support minority and women-owned businesses. New York State's population is, is one of the most diverse in the country, and it is critical for our government to develop and retain a diverse and inclusive economic sector. I'm sure you are all aware, well aware of the most recent disparity study the state issued in 2016. We found that there are over 90,000 minority and women-owned firms in New York State. A majority of them are small businesses, and based on the analysis, they continue to be underutilized in New York State contracting. The governor's vision to address the issue of underutilization of MWBEs was and is still based on New York's financial growth and stability and is dependent upon the success of its small businesses, of its minority and women-owned businesses. When Governor Cuomo first took office in 2011, we stood at less than 10% MWBE utilization. With the announcement in 2014 of our goal for 30% utilization with MWBE firms in New York State contracts, there became and continues to be a wealth of opportunities for MWBEs. In fiscal year 17-18, we achieved a utilization rate of 28.62%. That is the highest date rate to date in the, in the state of New York and in the entire nation. That same year, over $2.5 billion in state contracts were awarded to minority and women-owned businesses. Since 2011, we have seen a cumulative growth of over $13 billion in state contracts awarded to MWBEs. And we are on track to exceed those achievements in 1819. There are currently over 8,600 firms in New York State that are certified as MWBEs, which represents the largest directory of minority women-owned firms in the, in the country. However, we're not stopping there. There are top projects in the New York State region, which include the redevelopment of LaGuardia Airport, the Moynihan Station, the Javits Transformation. All of those have 30% goals and represent incredible opportunities for minority-owned businesses to participate in the New York State economy. Under Governor Cuomo's leadership, we've developed one of the most comprehensive MWBE programs in the country. Just this week, Governor Cuomo concluded negotiations with the New York State Legislature, which led to the reauthorization of Article 15A. Now, it's Article 15A that outlines the provisions that are related to the participation of MWBEs in state contracting uh, activity. That statute was due to expire at the end of this year. It's important that we were able to continue this program because it's 15A that provides for the expansion of New York State program to ensure ongoing and meaningful participation of MWBEs in the economic growth of the state. With the reauthorization, we not only are now seeing an extension of the program, but also the implementation of key enhancements to ensure that MWBEs are provided the opening to compete and participate in the significant opportunities that lie within the New York State economy under Governor Cuomo. And I'd like to just walk you through a few of these key provisions. If you are an MWBE firm in the state of New York that is interested in engaging in contracting with the state, there are some significant changes to the program that are really going to impact your ability to compete and participate in state contracting. We have extended the term of MWBE certification from three to five years. We have increased the ability for agencies to contract directly with MWBEs for contracts up to $500,000. That's up from $200,000. We have increased the personal net worth cap for MWBEs that are participating in the program to $15 million. Those of you who have participated in the program in the past were aware that if you had a personal net worth of $3.5 million, you were not able to participate in the program. That cap has just been raised to $15 million, creating new opportunities for MWBEs that are successful for, in order for them to participate in the program. We've also added a number of additional provisions and exclusions to the MWBE related to the personal net worth cap. So our hope and expectation is that MWBEs, especially those that have realized some success in the marketplace, are now are, have additional opportunities for state contracting. 
We've created a workforce program with goals for the employment of minority group members and women on construction projects. We've enhanced opportunities for MWBE prime contractors. We will now have a 10% bidding credit for low bid construction projects. So if you are an MWBE firm and you bid on a construction project of $1.4 million or less, you get an additional 10% credit on your pricing in order to in incentivize the engagement of MWBEs. We're calling for additional transparency measures in the diversity in the delivery of the state's workforce and have a number of other provisions that are significant and will support the continued growth of the New York State MWBE program. New York leads the nation in growing opportunities for minority and women-owned businesses. We in the executive chamber see increased diversity in our marketplace as a driving force for innovation and advancement in our economy. It is straightforward and very important. We will continue to endeavor to ensure that our business community and our workforce reflects all the best perspectives that we have to offer in the state of New York with the support and participation of organizations like the American, Asian Americans in Business, this effort will help us all achieve what the governor has recognized as a priority for his administration. Keeping New York as an employer of choice, an employer respectful and appreciative of all that a diverse workforce can bring to the health of our state, and most importantly, a partner that is committed to addressing historic inequities in employment and wealth. We're, we are well on the way to achieving fair engagement of New York State MWBEs in the New York State economy and look forward to continuing to partner with all of you to ensure full equality for all New Yorkers. Thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. This is an amazing room. I know coming up, and I've spent, just spent 20 years at Morgan Stanley, I'm going to take a, a moment just to say thank you to John Wong because what he's created here is almost a one-man show. There are a lot of people, but this man has done this. And look what he's created. I think I was awardee in 2011 when I was eight. And um, <laughs> I think the, the goal was look at this room, look at the sponsors, the Colgates, Con Edison, Aetna, Diageo, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, <laughs> PepsiCo. And look at the Asian Americans in this room. When we were coming up, there was no organizations like this to help us. And now we can keep opening the door. And when you hear what Luxman's story, it's continuing to open the door. John has given us a conduit, so I thank you to John. Now, I was going to read a lot about Luxman, but it's, it's a very impressive story. But you have it in your, in, in your programs, and it, it's an amazing story. But I'm going to hit some of the, uh, the things that make this a great story, a well-rounded story. I talked earlier to his mom who's here, and uh, for all of us, uh, our moms are who make us, whether we like it sometimes or not. Lakshman's mom's name is Bama, and she, she made sure that I knew that it wasn't Obama, but it was Bama. <laughs> and her story was that when Lakshman is applying for his MBA, um, he sent all the applications to her, and he told her that Harvard was really difficult and very hard, and they make you work and have no life. So when he sent her the application, she kind of tore up the Harvard um, business school application. He went to Wharton, but to this day, it's one of those moments. So um, I'm going to read a couple of things. I mean, I'll go really quickly. Luxman's mechanical engineering from the University of Pune, an MA in German and international studies at UPenn, MBA in finance from the Wharton School. 19 years at McKenzie, working three continents in a wide array of roles, and then in 2012 to PepsiCo. And at PepsiCo, he quickly excelled in leadership roles as a senior vice president and CFO of Pepsi Foods across North America and Latin America. CEO of PepsiCo Latin American and Europe Sub-Saharan Africa, and his most recent position is Global Chief, Ch Chief Commercial Officer at PepsiCo, a role created because of his vast experience and background. But again, what makes people great and why we celebrate this crowd isn't the hard work stories that you hear, it's how well rounded are and what they do for other people. I've asked Luxman to speak for me at Morgan Stanley Diversity events and he's the first to do it. 
I know he's a great friend. I've heard today he's a great father who loves George Michael. I've heard from his lovely wife, Vidya, that he is a, was a lead singer in a rock and roll band at McKenzie. Let us all take a moment and picture that, if we can. I know John only told me I had an hour to this introduction, so I'm gonna finish it really quickly. A couple of quotes from um, some of uh, Lakshman's colleagues. Lakshman is a brilliant consumer guy. We started at the same time in the same office of McKinsey Cleveland. For six months, our evaluator mistook him for me and me for him. We always wondered who was being evaluated. By the way, he has the loudest laugh in PepsiCo. It's from Vivek Shankaran, a former PepsiCo executive, now CEO of Albertsons. Another uh, quote was, many people don't know that Lakshman's a true artist. He raps and is an accomplished poet. No joke, he performed in San Francisco. All the Pepsi pilots know when he is coming on the plane because he loves peanut butter and jelly and life cereal with milk, which is always stocked because of him. He speaks six languages, by the way, if anyone didn't know that. And a lot of people would say I only speak two, English and gibberish. So he has a great sense of humor. He's a lover of music. He can multitask as he can text multiple people while listening to a speech, all the while carrying on a sidebar conversation. Um, that was from his colleague, Brian Newman. And finally, he's highly intelligent. He has a warm personality, but he got to cut through that shell. He has a broad perspective and interest from history to science to arts. He's a family man, adores his children, and loves Vidya, Eugene Williamson. It's all about a village and a family. So today, as we go back and we try to other people to nominate, the story of Lakshman Narasimha isn't hard work, it's the well-roundedness. Good friend, good father, um, good singer, uh, great businessman and great executive. To his family, his mother, Bama, his son, Arjun, Mohini, and his wife, Vidya, without further ado, I give you a man I'm honored to call my friend, someone I admire, and a fellow South Indian, your pinnacle awardee, Lakshman Narsimham. Thank you, Kamesh, for that, uh, for that kind, if I can use that word, kind introduction, and for exposing me in front of all these people. I actually want to start with one order of business. I actually want to really appreciate Lourdes Zapata first, the Chief Diversity Officer from Governor Cuomo's office. Lourdes, where are you? You know, my name is a very complicated name, and I want to really appreciate the fact that you took hours trying it out, and you really made the effort to say it. So I just want to say, muchas gracias, Senora Lourdes Zapata. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Well, Honorable Lourdes Zapata, Consul General Sadia, Faisunesa, the, the Consul General of Bangladesh, Consul General from China, Huang Ping, the Consul General Nippon Pechpon Prapas from the Royal Thai Consulate General, the Consul General Jasmine Wee from the Singapore Consulate, the Outstanding 50 Award Dinner Committee, the AABDC founder, mentor, inspiration, missionary, President John Wang. Thank you for this honor. <laughs> With this honor, you don't just honor me, but you also honor my family, my mother, my wife, my children who are here. And importantly, you also honor PepsiCo. And for that, on behalf of the 250,000 employees in the company, we just wanted to say thank you to all of you. <clears throat> like many immigrants to this fine country, much like Sima Modi said, my story too is an improbable one. I came to this country 
as the only surviving child of three. And when I got here at the age of 24, two years after my father passed away, I landed in this country with two suitcases, with $7,700, and because I'm Indian, and my mother thought I wouldn't eat very well, I came to this country with a pressure cooker. <laughs> As you can well imagine, coming to this country 28 years ago was really intimidating. I remember the first time I came to New York City and I got off the train at Penn Station and I walked to Wall Street, intimidated, not really knowing how I would make it in this place. 28 years ago, I stood outside this building without knowing what it was and without ever thinking that I would actually be here. What a journey it has indeed been. It is a journey that started with me being drawn to this country, to what this country stood for, for the values of America, and the fact that what it stood for, like this shining light on the hill, and the purpose that the country had that elevated me. And as I came to this country, I grew to love it. I grew to adopt it. And it adopted me like it did many of the migrants who came here. This is a great country, and I stand here because of what America gave me. But I could not have been here, or could not be here, without the countless mentors who saw in me things that I did not see in myself. Over the 19 years at McKinsey, there were many people who thought that I was greater than I could ever be. And then I joined PepsiCo, and I had the opportunity to work with some truly inspirational leaders who became mentors, who created opportunities, who taxed me, who pushed me, who challenged me. Let me just name two. One, an inspirational person like Indra Nui, who created a lot of great options for me. And another, and another person, a true, truly distinctive person of science, Mahmoud Khan, who is a former awardee here, who actually was remarkable in just his insight and the support that he gave me. But my story at PepsiCo is a story that so many people have. PepsiCo is an amazing institution. It has a strong platform to attract, develop, and retain diverse talent. It creates so many opportunities for simple people out in the street who are selling to people who evolve and grow and reach heights like many of our people do, both within this company as well as within the partners that the company has. PepsiCo celebrates diversity. PepsiCo stands for inclusion. And at the end of the day, creates opportunities for people like me. I would not be here. I would not be here without the amazing opportunities that PepsiCo has created for me. So just to end, my story is a very simple one. I came from nothing, literally nothing. And it took a lot of things that I had to do in this country. The country supported me. My mentors at PepsiCo and McKinsey created opportunities for me. My family supported me. But I leave here filled with hope and with inspiration as I receive this award. Hope, because there is an improbable story of a young man from Pune, India, who stands in front of you, and that America created as an opportunity for him. But I also, <laughs> but I also leave here with inspiration, inspiration looking at the many Asian Americans who are here in the audience, extremely talented winners. But I also am inspired because I see so many friends of Asian Americans who are here as well. Thank you for your support and thank you for helping us achieve what we truly can. My story proves that Asian Americans across America are poised in this coming generation 
to make their dreams come true. And when they do that, despite all the rhetoric that one might hear, it will make this country stronger. And as they get better, and as they achieve what they really can, it will make this world a much better place. Thank you for this honor. The recipients of the 2019 Outstanding 50 Asian Americans in Business Awards are Sumit Agarwal, Midmark India, Imad Ahmed, United Health Group, Yogesh Bal, Alex Partners, Sandeep Banote, Radius 8 Inc. For those, Bathina, CVS Health, Jerry Chan, BNY Mellon, Lavanya Chandrasekhar, Diageo, North America, Aggie Chang, Exit Realty, Dynasty, Sharda Churwu, Ernst & Young, LLP, Yvonne Choi, Red Lion Hotels, Corp, Lena Eng, Craft Worldwide, Vikram Madhitya Gupta, Nutanix, Philip Han, Goldman Sachs, Neil Harani, Harani Group, Chutikan Hoover, Suko Spa Massage, Yvonne Shu, Hills Pet Nutrition, U.S. Colgate, Shamela Javed, Alien Science and Technology, Cheng Yu Jiao, China Merchant Bank, New York Branch, Regith Karub, J.P. Morgan Chase, Deborah Lee, Price Waterhouse Coopers, George Lee, Prudential Financial, James Lamb, Group 26 Real Estate, James Kalani Lee, SAP, Ann Lim O'Brien, Hydric and Struggles, Jian Lee, Merck, Eric Liu, Wipro Technologies, Prashant Mitha, Think Energy Partners, Dave Nareen, Dave West, Indian Imports, Anchil Panchnanda, Morgan Stanley, Yathin Patel, Reservations.com, Vikram Raya, Vitology Institute, Marion Shah, UHY, Chuan Shi, Bloomberg, Z Peter Song, Kung Fu Kitchen, Shizuka Suzuki, AT&T Communications, Richard Tan, JLL, Sunit Varma of Pfizer, Pallavi Verma of Accenture, Somya Viswanathan, Tenet Healthcare, John Shu, JNC International Group, Teresa Yu, IBM, Joel Yu, Con Edison, Amy Zhang Alger, Amy Zhu, American China Sports Association. If you wait for the perfect bus, it will never come because there's no such thing as perfection. So stop waiting and start running. Start pursuing opportunities. And you are all very successful because you're on the bus. You're on the bus because you're very successful. Just remember one more lesson. Now that you're on the bus, there are other people running. Other people in Asian American community, your neighbors, your colleagues, people that you meet who are running for that bus of opportunity, give them a hand up. That's how the universe works.